Thank you to all of our speakers today. Time certainly has uh, <coughs> moved on as we come to now the question time. So in just uh, starting to raise some of this discussion uh, with our panel members and amongst the audience members, I'll just remind you of some of the uh, myths and assumptions and misperceptions that have developed to date. And having worked in this field, all of us in our various capacities are very clear that male victims are there. They are in dire need of the support and we also know the blocks and resources that they face. And we do our best in our capacity to help them on that one-on-one -on -one level. Clearly social awareness, community awareness and various service provider awareness is required so that re-victimisation or misjudgments don't inadvertently occur because there's the shock and surprise um, that a male could experience this and how could that possibly occur. So I'll just ask now as I open it up to any questions, given we've you know, got some short time left for this, so in the interest of everyone having a chance to ask a question, please keep any commentary as brief as possible um, as you get to your question and we'll aim to um, have some good discussion with you. So I saw a hand up the back there. Yeah, hi, um, thanks for your speeches. I just wanted to ask, you know, one of the main things that you pinpointed is that men um, are scared to lose their kids and access to their kids. And, I've got lots of friends who are in, not in an abusive relationship, but when it comes to the family court, it's very hard for them, even as good, fa you know, good fathers not in a domestic situation, to get access to their children. Um, is there any sort of um, progress in the family courts to, um, I guess, take note of these domestic situations and how do they perceive it? Do you want to take that? The same kind of barriers and blocks are happening there. Obviously the system being able to assist female victims in this area has got the same kind of paradigm and perception, but nonetheless they're still helping male uh, victims as well. What we found in work we've done is to keep on informing men about these difficulties they may face uh, in that sphere uh, and being aware um, it's another layer that they're needing to deal with whilst also being distressed and going through these difficult times and incredibly concerned for their children um, in the mere fact of protecting them. Of if I leave or if I don't really do my best for this, they'll be exposed to the same abuse and violence. Um, so they're incredibly protective and loyal, obviously, to their kids and loyal to their partner in that they don't really want to go through that system anyhow and they'll be the last to um, really bring up any slander um, toward their ex-partner. Um, I think it's slow but steady. There's a service up in Queensland, Men's Rights Agency, that is, um, assists in this process and certainly more informed of the details of that. So if you want to look up their website. Dad's in distress as well. And Dad's in distress certainly looks specifically at the legal system with that. But that's a very slow system, <laughs> as uh, we all know. <laughs> yeah, you. you're welcome. Were there any other questions, comments? Should I take this as shock? <laughs> Go okay, for it. Well, I have a practical question. Sure. Um, I think it's great. Um, I'm Grayson. You mentioned um, the research, sorry, I wrote it down. Around predictability, um, the greatest predictor of penetration um, down the track was the female to male. <coughs> I didn't write down the study, but it's kind of interesting. Okay. The name of your world will look it up. Absolutely. Um, the, there's a link to, if you go to one in threecomau it, there's a link to there, but I will give it to you again here. So it was the National Crime Prevention Study, 2001, and the title was Young People and Domestic Violence. It was produced by the Attorney General's Department in Canberra. Um, because of the change of government, they've archived that document from their website, but there's an active link from the one in three website to a full PDF of that, so. Okay. Other questions? Greg, perhaps you can let us know about some of the outcomes and achievements that's come since one in three was launched 18 months ago. Okay, well, the, the public response has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, we've had many emails of support from around Australia and, around and across the globe. Um, many supporters have joined the campaign and they're listed on the website, many high profile um, supporters. We've got a lot of media coverage um, in the print press, uh, radio and online. Um, uh, we've uh, 
I'd just talk about three quarters of a million dollars recently committed to Men's Line Australia to support male victims of family violence. I can't say we're directly responsible for that, but these things have been happening since we started, so we hope we, we played a part in that. The uh, New South Wales Government domestic violence website now has a page for male victims. They never had a page previously, and that um, we think that's a big step forward. Um, there is, as I mentioned, Men's Line Australia now has tip sheets for male victims of domestic violence on their website, which they didn't before. Um, we've commissioned some new data from this ABS on, uh, from the personal safety survey that was done in 2005, which shows that there's no significant difference between the levels of physical assault experienced by men and women in the home or from persons known to them. So that wasn't teased out in the, in the published report, so we had to commission uh, some, some data for that. Um, we've lodged submissions on it with a number of inquiries, including family law inquiries, to try and make sure that the family law system is responsive to the needs of male victims and their children. Um, we've attended consultation processes around uh, the National Plan to Reduce Violence Against Women and Their Children, um, and around the New South Wales Domestic Violence Behaviour Change Programs. Um, and I've been assisting Greg uh, where I can with some information and resources for his training program. Mm -hmm. um, we're collaborating with the, an organisation in Western Australia you may not be aware of called the Global Good Foundation, which is a charity um, that works in the area of domestic and family violence. And we're working together with them so that their domestic violence campaigns and resources um, include the voices of both men and women. And we've assisted with a um, with the program I mentioned that's running in the Hawkesbury region of Sydney, where Windsor Police are referring male victims to the Hawkesbury District Health Service for phone counselling. We've established a data collection program with them so that we can actually keep tabs on on the data around these men. Yeah. So um, a number of things. It's a slow, steady process of chipping away, but um, we feel that you know things are changing, and um, you know it's yeah. it's going to be a long road. But yeah, and and of course, um, you know, none of that would ever take away from uh, the need for services for women. So one of the key things that we've often found along the way, and having done several radio and TV interviews on this topic, one of the things that never ceases to amaze me is um, shortly after the myriad of phone calls and emails that come in from men absolutely relieved that someone's spoken mm -hmm. about it, just relieved, in tears, and just they're listening if they've called or reading their email, sharing their story and offering if you need more information or if you need this for somewhere else, please let us know. To be able to receive non-judgmental support and some initial understanding and knowing that they won't be ridiculed or judged or uh, unfortunate misconceptions that many have unfortunately received um, just by inadvertent unawareness of people working in the field um, and needing to come to grips with this level of information and the dynamics involved um, that men aren't likely to tell you any time soon. So in our capacity, in our working levels, the screening and the questioning and asking the questions we may not feel comfortable to ask or haven't even been alerted to ask, which hopefully today has given you some thoughts of other questions to ask, not only of men in terms of do you experience um, certain types of abuse and typically a starting point would be the verbal abuse, the level of criticism, insults, being demeaned, being belittled, and the pattern or frequency of that over time and the psychological impact that can have um, on anyone, and in particular, masculine thinking, um, coming from normal manhood strengths, being demeaned, if not their fatherhood role or their sexual performance. And unfortunately, <coughs> women's in, in this case, women's increased verbal literacy um, can most certainly mean with a sugar-coated viper tongue. And often men can relate to that um, when you're asking them about this kind of experience or they just start to bring it up themselves and similarly asking women about their patterns of potential abuse or if they use any physical means. Do you throw a pen? Do you threaten? Do you scratch? Um, do you throw insults or criticisms? Uh, the kind of things that even unconsciously happen for women because of frustration or anger or the various reasons that Greg mentioned earlier um, and don't realise that over time it creates an abusive pattern and a difficult situation in their partnerships. It's certainly not helping them develop a respectful relationship and one where they can generate more satisfaction and fulfilment with each other. Um, so these are very important questions to keep in mind for yourselves. 
just prior to us closing up, would be interested to hear in terms of your working capacity or chatting with other colleagues about this topic, what you've tended to come across or any thoughts, uh, questions, uncertainties and opinions that you may have come across, if you're willing to share. Yes, I'd really like to ask a question about how effective victim services have been in responding to the needs of male victims of domestic violence. Yeah, what we've encountered so far is um, the shock that Greg Milan had initially mentioned. It's initially a bit of a jaw drop, <laughs> initially, of, oh, how do I handle this? From victim um, services, not yeah. from, from victim crisis. services, yeah, from victim services, um, and unfortunately, at times, through many anecdotes and clients I've worked with, and perhaps the others may comment as well, of unfortunately certain comments like, "What did you do to deserve it? You must have done something wrong," or "Come on, man up," or "Suck it up. She couldn't possibly hurt you that much." So, unfortunate, flippant comments that have come out that unfortunately re-victimise and the silence is just then encouraged. He's taken the step to come out already in a psychologically abused state, um, if not socially abused, financially abused, and that unfortunately perpetuates him to just go back into the cave again. Um, similarly though, depending on the services, um, they have also gained some support <laughs> when people have been able to overcome some of the initial thoughts of shock and surprise of going, oh, okay, it's a human issue. We need to help you regain your strength and your resilience. So there's anecdotes and evidence on various sides. I think some of the strengths have been where services have networked together. Yeah. And it's more the relationship of the expertise mm -hmm. of the counsellor who's being mm -hmm. referred to, the social worker, the psychologist, yep. the victims of uh, victim services Absolutely. support group. And then you get a very close click and yeah. you know that client's going to be supported, male or female. And that's why on this level we want to keep raising this social awareness on the worker level and the service provider level so that we can be the beacons of light for the men so they don't have to face too many barriers beyond what we face systemically anyway <laughs> in knowing what our work's about and being able to network and knowing he may need to be in touch with the court system somehow or a lawyer or other counsellors. Greg? I'm sorry, I just neglected to say, I mentioned my training program, there's some postcards here up the front if people want to know more about the training program and how you contact me. The, the program's been run here in Sydney and Perth and up in the Hunter region. Um, every time we run a training program for about 25 people, they form a network, which is what you're saying, which is great, so they can support each other and share information, that's how it works. There'll be another one in Perth in September and we're planning, I'm planning if there's interest, Brisbane and Melbourne. So if you live in an area where you'd like a program run, we can do it if you contact me. So there's some information up here if you'd like that. Thanks, Greg. Greg or Tony, do you want to make any final comments before I wrap up? Greg? Okay. Well, we won't hold you up from tea. <laughs> it is the second day. So just in wrapping up with you, we do hope that your awareness is raised on variable levels as you return into your professional capacities and hopefully open up these discussions with your colleagues in raising awareness and understanding. Please bear in mind, he's not likely to tell you anytime soon. So if we can invite you to consider the questions um, that, that I'll put up in a moment in your own context. Um, just before that, each of us are happy to have a chat with you during the tea break if you'd like further information or our contact details again, so please feel free to approach us uh, with any questions or discussion points. Um, but if we can just leave you with these to consider within your own context, where are we at in our views and approach toward male victims of, of abuse and violence? And hopefully it's either expanded or um, shifted some things for you. And importantly, on the other side of the coin, where are we at in terms of female perpetrators? They need some assistance as well. And both sides of the coin will help the overall dynamic for men and women and children, naturally. So with that, please enjoy your afternoon tea and the remainder of the conference. And thank you so much for being with us for this hour and a half. We appreciate your attention.